Uh, hey, everybody, uh, Eric Katz here, also known as Prof. And today I want to do a uh, quick demo, uh, hopefully keeping this at about 15 minutes about how you can end up setting up a, an environment to write your code that's not on your computer. And first, let's talk about why we're going to do this, and then we'll go through the, the process. So we're going to end up setting up an environment. We're going to end up setting it up in a service that Amazon has on AWS called Cloud9. And they have what we would call an online integrated development environment. Uh, integrated development environment is where you can end up writing code out. You can end up testing your code out, that sort of thing. You have sort of a graphical interface to end up doing this. Um, there are other places you could do this as well, but we're going to end up focusing on Cloud9. That's what I'm most familiar with. So uh, we're going to show you to do this in a way that you don't have to, uh, you can end up doing this really on different types of machines. Um, and then let me explain a little bit. This is a pretty, pretty low tech here. So we've got this integrated development environment. That's what IDE stands for. It's a place to write code. Uh, and you might ask the question, if I'm going to write code, why don't I end up doing it on my own machine? And in the real world, for practicality, very often, or most of the time, you will end up writing it on your own machine. But if you're learning to code, there are a plethora of issues that you can end up running into for all types of reasons. By the way, even as a professional, you could sometimes run into this, these issues. And this could be a nice backup for you as well, but I really like it for the learning experience. You might have an older machine, you might have a Windows machine and wanna end up writing code in a, a Unix type environment. And these are things that you can end up doing uh, with Windows, but there are issues that end up coming up. Uh, maybe, you only have access to a, a Chromebook that you're using, and this would still end up working. Um, so, uh, you know, sort of in summary here, um, environment issues are real. Developers run into them all the time, uh, but you don't need to have these issues when you're learning how to code. And uh, what I sort of hate to see is someone that's learning how to code and they run into so many problems setting up their environment that they end up throwing in the towel. Um, again, these are things that you're going to run into, but it's a lot easier to deal with them when you have the sort of basic knowledge of building uh, applications. I think you're more willing to deal with these things, but even as professional developers, they end up getting frustrated. So there's a couple of pieces that we're going to end up dealing with here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up setting up an environment here on cloud nine. So I'm logged into AWS. There's a console. You have to set up an account to do this, but the service that I'm gonna uh, look for here is Cloud9. And when I go to this, there's all kinds of services on AWS, but this is a service where basically you have an environment that's on some remote server uh, somewhere. Um, and again, we're just doing it to sort of have an environment that's not running on our local machine. All we would need to end up learning how to write code in this situation is a, uh, a computer that has a browser that has decent uh, internet access. So I'm going to go and create an environment and I'm going to use all the defaults here. I'm going to call this profs, ENV for profs environment. And I'm really not all that worried about what type of environment. I, I, again, we could switch these around, um, but I'm just going to go with all the defaults here. And this is a, an Amazon Linux environment. Maybe, maybe there's something that's a little bit better, but again, we're looking to get in there to set up an environment to write code. And I'm gonna click on next step here. Uh, and I'm gonna click on create environment. Now this can take a little bit of time. It's actually going out and provisioning uh, an environment for you. There's some uh, server that's up there that's really setting up your environment. And once the environment ends up getting set up, we're gonna end up configuring it. So I've got a gist here that I use, and we could probably even streamline this if we want to, but there's a number of things that I'm gonna do. I'm basically just gonna be doing a lot of copying and pasting here uh, in order to end up setting up uh, this environment. The other thing that I just wanna end up uh, bringing up is that there's a number of pieces uh, to building web applications. And I'm gonna operate under the assumption that we're building, this doesn't have to be the case, but that we're gonna be building full stack applications and we're even gonna have a database, database which is a Postgres uh, database. And so one of the things that we're gonna to have to configure 
uh, is actually getting Postgres set up. If you weren't using Postgres, this would be a much easier process. The other thing that I like about this is that if you make a mistake while you're setting up the environment, just delete the environment and start again. I know that uh, you know very often folks will end up configuring their own machines and they read something about how to configure something and they're copying and pasting. And there's a real fear, did I do something to end up screwing up my machine? You don't have to worry about that here. That's not a fear that you have to have because you could always end up deleting it. I like to think of these environments as being disposable. Uh, so we can see that it did set up the environment. Here's my terminal. This is where my files are. Um, and this is where I'm gonna end up, end up coding. Um, and, and again, I want you to think about it as a disposable environment. Now that doesn't mean that you're not gonna end up writing code that is not important, right? Because again, when you delete the environment, your files are gonna be gone. So the other thing that we're gonna do and that we're gonna end up configuring, but again, it's not a lot of stuff to do, is that we're gonna end up configuring GitHub. If anything is even remotely important to us, we're gonna end up saving it up on uh, GitHub. Okay, so as we're writing, we're gonna make sure when we set up our environment, we'll end up setting up GitHub. If you just wanted to experiment, by the way, you don't have to set up GitHub. You could end up you know, experimenting now if you wanted to. If I decided that I was gonna make this a little bit bigger, Possibly, maybe not. Um, what you could end up doing here is I could end up touching a file, right? I'll call it foo.js and I could run node foo.js. It'll end up running that file. If I was to go in here and do the proverbial hello world, I could do that. When you're you know, done, there's a, a save where you could end up saving your file and you could run this again and you'll end up seeing hello world. So this is an environment. This is an environment. You could do whatever you want to do it. You could end up destroying it. It's not gonna have any impact on your computer at all. But let's do something a little bit um, more uh, robust because I, again, I think the issues that people run into is that when they end up installing these other things on their machines, this is where they end up running into the issues. So um, this is a gist and I will, um, put this in the, uh, I'll include this as well. This is a gist that I have set up where we're logging into uh, AWS, we're going to cloud nine, we're creating an environment and I'm gonna copy and paste all these commands uh, just as they are, Con uh, command C or control C, whatever you wanna do. And I'll sort of explain if I can uh, as, I'm, as I'm going through this. And uh, let's, let's set that up. I would like this to be a little bit of a bigger font face if I could. Let me try to do that. It took me a couple of seconds to find this, but you have uh, preferences that you could look at. And I'm only doing this because I want you to see this a little bit better. Uh, but there are preferences that you could end up going to uh, under with your environment. There are all kinds of preferences that you could set up depending on how you want to set things up. But again, uh, you can always, uh, you know, uh, as you get more comfortable with this, uh, you could end up looking at this, not really all that critical now. Um, so I'm going to end up following these steps really to the T. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm going in as an administrator, uh, sudo, and this is actually something called interactive mode. So you learn a little bit about some uh, uh, Linux commands at this point. So I'm going in as administrator. Now, everything that I'm doing here is to end up setting up Postgres. So I'm going out and I'm gonna end up installing Postgres. Again, I'm copying these lines one at a time. Every once in a while, they'll end up getting a little bit, uh, I could run into some issues here where they end up getting, getting stuck, but the majority of the time it ends up, uh, it ends up working. And again, if it doesn't, you could always end up restarting this, All right? So I ended up installing, um, uh, Postgres. Um, and what I'm going to do here is now I need to, this is just the way that Postgres works, is that we need to have a user uh, who uh, has a database in Postgres. It's kind of a weird thing, but every user in Postgres actually has a database. And that's where we're going to set up uh, here. So I'm actually going to go, this is a command to get me into Postgres. 
Okay, so now I'm actually in Postgres and what I'm gonna do in Postgres, you don't have to understand all these commands, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a user called the EC2 user. This is the user that you have on AWS. Any system has a user in uh, Cloud9. This is the name of the user, no matter what you end up setting up. This is not something you have to change and it's creating this user. Um, and then I'm gonna end up quitting Postgres. And there is a, a permissioning uh, issue because we wanna end up running Postgres from a web application. And there's some files that we're gonna edit here. And again, there could be better commands to end up doing this. I found that this worked with experience. Okay, so I ended up making this change. And now I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to restart Postgres. Okay, so this ended up restarting Postgres and now I'm in my regular environment. There's some notes here. If you end up um, going, uh, what, what, one of the things that happens with these, uh, with these environments is that uh, when they're turned off and they're sort of turned off so you don't get charged for them when you're not using them. And then there's a, a fair amount of uh, hours that they give you uh, out of the box. But uh, if you find that your Postgres is not working when you're logged out, these are commands that you could go and you're basically just restarting the Postgres server, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna end up creating a very simple uh, application here. And um, these are just commands that are gonna create a directory, do an NPM init, touch a server file. And my goal here is to create an application that is running Postgres on the back end and, and get it up to GitHub and show you how you end up doing it on cloud nine. So I'm just copying and pasting those commands it's gonna go and uh, install some files. This is not stuff you, you have to end up memorizing here. Uh, again, this is just enough to sort of get you started to show you how it works. And this is my application. And I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna copy this. And again, if you're doing an application that didn't have Postgres, it would even be a little bit easier to set up. But you can see, this is the app that I set up in here. Um, I'm actually in this file and you can treat this just like your environment. If I type uh, ls, these are all my commands here. We're gonna eventually set up a GitHub uh, repo for this. Um, and um, I'm gonna go into this server file. This is my file. I copied and pasted this stuff. And if you're familiar with um, uh, Express, uh, this should end up making some sense to you. Let's make sure I got everything here. Okay, so uh, we are, uh, listening on a port. One thing that's different if you're developing locally is you could choose your port that your app is listening on. When you're using Cloud9, they're going to give you a port that you can end up working with. Other than that, it's, things are relatively the same. I'm going to save this. All right. Uh, and I'm going to actually run the application. I'm going to make sure that it's working in my console, same way you would normally run an app. I'm going to run it here. Okay, and it's actually running the app. It's listening on port 8080. And you might say, well, that's good, but how do I end up looking at the app? Well, there's a preview where you can end up previewing the running app. And if we look at this application, this is actually our uh, application, right? We are, we've got users that we are creating here. We've got just two users, Mo and Lucy. Um, and if I go over here and I decide to open this up in another window, I could end up doing that as well. So this is actually being hosted on Cloud9, right? And you could write your code just like you normally would end up writing your code. So let's say we were sort of happy with this application. We want to end up saving it to GitHub. Maybe we made some changes to it. We want to save it to GitHub. Uh, I'm going to kill this. All right. right now, this is not a Git project, but I'm going to end up setting it up as a Git project. So I'll do a Git init. All right. Uh, let's look at our status here. Okay. Here are our Git files here. We'll do a couple of things here. Let me do something real quick because I don't want all those node modules folders. So just what you would end up normally doing, uh, I'm going to end up going over here and I'm going to echo node modules 
into my git ignore. Just so if I look at my status, it's not showing that node modules folder. So right now, my uh, this machine has no idea who I am on Git. So again, if the goal was to actually uh, set things up on Git, we've got a couple of things that we're going to do here. Uh, I'm going to generate a key, and I'm going to put that key on GitHub so I could push my changes to GitHub. Again, if you were just sort of practicing, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But I'm going to follow these commands exactly uh, as they are here. I'm going to generate a key. Let me close this out here. Let me actually bring that back. So if your terminal is gone here, we can end up viewing the console. And here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have the right command here. Uh, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to, you, you could put your email address here. So I went back here and I'm going to put my email address ericpcats at gmail.com, okay? I'm gonna hit enter. And these are all defaults. This is just gonna save your file. What you're really doing here uh, is that you're creating this public and private key, and you're gonna end up sharing one of these keys with GitHub. You're basically a way to end up identifying you and to send over your, your files. Um, so I'm gonna follow these exactly as they're here, run this command. This ends up, I think this ends up starting this SSH service, hit enter. It'll give us some ID here. Um, again, one at a time. And I'm adding this key, so it'll end up using this key that I just ended up creating, okay? Again, if you mess up, you could always end up restarting it. It's not the end of the world. Um, and now I just wanna look at this key. So I'm gonna go back over here. I'm using the cat command to find the key, right? So this is the key that I have. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this key and I'm gonna create a, this key up on GitHub. And I've got this link here, but if you don't see this link, you could always go over here and I'll delete this key later on because it's probably not great to be sharing this with the world. Um, but if I go over here and I look at my settings, I've got a setting here for SSH, keys, okay? And I'm going to create a new key, and I'm going to identify this, because again, I want to probably delete it later. I'll say profs, uh, AWS, ENV. Let me put today's date so I recognize it. What is it? 10, 28. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to just copy what I ended up pasting here. And I'm gonna say add SSH key. It's gonna ask me to confirm this. And again, this is where if you create something that's important, you wanna end up saving. A lot of times when you're coding at the beginning, not all that critical to end up saving it, okay? And then when I end up doing this, uh, what I'm gonna end up doing, if I look at my Git status, I'll see that I have these files and I'm gonna do the standard git add dot, git commit, okay? And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to um, actually set up this is the way that I usually like to do it. I'm going to set up a new repo on GitHub. And this is standard, has nothing to do with AWS. I'll say profs AWS demo. I'm going to make this public. I'm going to create the repo and I'm just going to copy exactly the command you have here. Here's an existing repo. You have to have one commit in order to do this. I do have my one commit. And I'm just gonna copy those lines of code that I had over here to get this repo up on GitHub, which is, I would say, more permanent than my environment here, okay? Push this up. It's gonna ask, are you sure you wanna connect? It only asks you this once. I'll say yes. And if I go back over here, now I've got the code that I ended up writing before. And that's really about the extent of it. Um, so again, just a, you know, a, a little review here, right? Um, any issues that you have, if you end up running into them, they can be really frustrating. Sometimes people like to struggle with it, but I don't think it's really a great process while you're trying uh, to learn. And also, like I said, you misplace your computer, you're working with an older computer, you don't have to go and set everything up. Again, this is going to take maybe about 10 minutes to end up uh, setting up. 
And again, you could follow the same steps uh, every time. Now, when you're done with this, uh, you could keep this uh, environment going, okay? But you also have the ability, if you want to, at any point, um, uh, you could get rid of the environment. It, we made changes, we put it up to GitHub, maybe we wanna end up trying this again, maybe this was just a little bit of an experiment for us. So we could always delete it. And we'll click on delete over here. And it'll eventually end up deleting this environment. Sometimes it's the same way that it takes a little time to provision it. It also takes a little bit of time to delete it. And while I'm doing that over here, why not go in and get rid of this key that I had before? So let me go to my settings. Again, I'm not getting rid of my repo. I could keep that there. Um, but if I end up looking at my SSS key, uh, SSH key, right? I could end up deleting that as well. And I end up deleting that key. Um, so uh, that really, I think, uh, ends, up, ends up covering it. Uh, and I hope that uh, you found this helpful. Again, I think too many developers, when they're starting, are too focused on their uh, machines, they run into issues, they spend so much time on it, they're not focusing on what's really important, which is really to end up getting in there and writing code and modifying code and building applications. I hope you enjoyed this.